The ball number 465 means 452 kilo. Jones Kennedy, the referee for this bout. Yakub, Germain, Larado, Matfua, and Vuong, the judges. This bout between David, Oliver Joyce of Ireland, the red corner, and Jai Bhagwan from India out of the blue corner. David Joyce was at the two th 2007 Aiba World Championships in Chicago, lost to Davy Sousa of Brazil in the first round. He was in Milan at the 2009 Aiba World Championships, where he lost to Oscar Valdez in the second round. And he was the Irish Nap National Championship silver medalist in 2011, earlier this year. He's also in the World Series of Boxing, Aiba's new professional league or semi-professional league so David Oliver Joyce a man around town and again we have Joyce from Ireland in the red corner and Bhagwan from India in the blue corner Joyce giving up a slight height advantage to Bhagwan Will that prove to be vital to him, or will the Irishman be able to fight his way in and get to the body of the taller, leaner Jai Bhagwan? Bhagwan looking to stay on the outside, at least so it seems, in the opening moments of this bout. Now we see some more locking up of the arms, and Bhagwan doing some work, some good work from the outside. Ripping a left and then a right upstairs. Nice, a double left hook down to the body. However, that looked a little low, and the referee is going to issue a caution to Bhagwan to keep those punches up. And Joyce is just going to stand there with his hands up and look for his opportunity. And there he starts to throw finally. And they wrestle in the center of the ring. And this height advantage looks like it's going to become problematic for both boxers because of where the punches are coming from and where they're landing. Nice sharp left gets inside. A sharp left inside by Joyce lands but at the same time he's counterpunched and goes down. So a standing eight count to David Joyce. And right out of the gate, Bagwan starting with a double jab, then another double jab, then a right to the belly and a left hook followed up by that so clearly Bagwan is willing to throw his hands and throw them well he looks like he's got a game plan and it looks like a good one that would be to stand on the outside use that jab effectively followed up with a right hand when he can when he gets grabbed inside like that to clinch and minimize the damage that Joyce can do and then to go back on the outside and keep working strategy like that is sure to make this an easier evening for him. Joyce, on the other hand, is gonna need to get inside those long arms and land some leather, some heavy punches. He's gonna have to break back one will and break him down round by round, hopefully getting close enough to land some good body shots. The way that Bagwan is fighting with his hands down is not a good sign. It could be a sign of being tired. It could be a sign of being lazy. It could be simply a sign of non-adherence to fundamentals. Whatever it's a sign of, it's a good sign for David Joyce. Joyce just needs to capitalize on that and be able to get some punches landing around the midsection or higher, the sternum, the face of, the, of, of Jai Bhagwan so that he could really start to rack up some points. I think he's going to need it since I imagine, after what we've seen here in the first round, that he may be down a few. And there it is, 13 to 8. So he's already finding himself in a ditch he'll need to dig himself out of, is David Joyce here in round number one.
Box is going to get some instructions from their corner here as they get out of their seats and their stools, rather, and off to the races for round number two. David Joyce from Ireland and Jai Bhagwan from India. Bhagwan comes into the second round with a 13 to 8 lead. It's a pretty strong lead, five points for just one round, and it looks like he's continuing that trend. Chopping overhand right by Joyce, uh, by Bhagwan, excuse me. Joyce doing a decent job keeping his hands up. Otherwise, there'd be a lot more points in Bhagwan's bag. But he does have a decent defense. It's just that he's standing there somewhat not, not mobile. Almost like a heavy bag where Joyce gets to pick and choose his shots because uh, Joyce, uh, excuse me, Bagwan gets to pick and choose his shots because Joyce is not doing too much upper body movement. That's a nice onslaught of punches right there. But again, Joyce is going to need to show more body movement, show more head movement, make himself a moving target. Not so easy for Bagwan to hit because otherwise Bagwan will pick him off all day from the outside and that would be the right strategy to employ. Look how Bagwan keeps his distance. He doesn't need to let Joyce inside. He's more than content to stand on the outside, use those long arms, and pick off Joyce wherever he chooses. So, again, Joyce is going to be well served to keep his hands up high, to keep his feet underneath him as he moves in, start showing some body and head movement, come in with some angles, and start getting to the body of Bagwan, break him down. Punch by, punch by punch, one at a time. Easier said than done, but it would be a advisable strategy for the youngster from Ireland. And now the referee's going to caution the Irish boxer for hitting on the side of the head during the break. No hitting on the break is a general rule, however. There are times where it seems to go unnoticed or otherwise non non cautioned by the referees. So now Bhagwan and Joyce lock up again in the center. And as Bhagwan starts to retreat some more and circle away, the referee is going to caution them and let the boxing resume. Left hand by Joyce. And there's just a lot of roughhousing now in the center of the ring. Again, we are at the 2011 Aiba World Boxing Championships. This is the first qualifying event for the 2012 Summer Olympic Games in London. And David Joyce and Jai Bhagwan are doing their battle in the center of the ring here. This is a lightweight contest. We've been boxing for a number of days here in the Haydel, Haydar Aliyev Sports Complex in Baku, Azerbaijan, named after the founding father of this great nation, Haydar Aliyev. He's been long associated with this country's fine honor and tradition. His son now, the president of the country, and we thank the Azerbaijani organizers of this event, the Boxing Federation, AIBA, the International Amateur Boxing Association, for putting on this wonderful show. As you can see, uh, some action there from round number two. And the long-armed Bagwan doing just enough, however, the Irishman, David Oliver Joyce, has closed the gap significantly in round two, and it's now just a two-point margin. So 20 to 18, the Indian boxer over the Irish boxer. That's a much better predicament than Joyce could have otherwise found himself in in this round. right hand by Bhagwan. Joyce rips a left to the body and a right. And now Joyce is really starting to apply the pressure. He's going to start charging his man, walking him down if he can. 
Joyce continuing to plunge forward. Bagwan, as has been the case for much of this bout, trying to keep it on the outside. The referee going to issue a caution to Bagwan, and Bagwan again is going to lock up as Joyce wants no part of that. Shoves him off with authority, and now the referee going to issue a caution again to Joyce for pushing on the break. Or rather, pushing to cause the break, it would seem. And now a headlock are being applied by Joyce as Bagwan is a willing partner in that dance. Breather for everyone. And now they're going to take a, give a warning to Bagwan, which is interesting because he was the one with the in the headlock. However, that's the two points that David Oliver Joyce needed from that warning to make this a close, close match. I would imagine it's tied right now, thanks to that warning. And David Oliver Joyce enjoying the munificence of the referee right here. Now the referee going to issue a caution to Joyce for pushing off the break. Right hand by Joyce. Another right hand by Joyce. Bagwan throws a body shot, and all of a sudden, a left hand by Oliver landed square on the chin of Bagwan. Oliver Joyce, that is, and that one looked like it had its effect, but now the referee's going to issue a warning to David Oliver Joyce, thereby once again taking away the very benefit he just enjoyed when Bob Long got the warning. So, a minute and a half down, this is anyone's bout with the action being the way it has been and with the warnings each being applied to each to the boxers one for each in this third round. This is anyone's match right here. They equaled each other out, those warnings did, and now the referee's going to issue a caution to Bagwan. This time the referee is going to send Joyce to the corner, and he's going to take another point from Bagwan. So this is another warning, another two points in the pocket of David Joyce, thereby taking back that advantage. Once again, that's four points added to his score. And now the referee is going to issue a caution to Bagwan for turning his body around. Bagwan on the canvas from some rough housing and it's very nice to see these boxers giving it their all. It's the end of the third round, and each of these guys is trying to get to London. They're each trying to get to the quarterfinals tomorrow. It's late in the night. These boxers have been keeping their energy up all day for this draw that they received. And now as we come to the waning moments, we see some more clinching. And again, it seems like Joyce gets the better of the, of the clinches just because he's a little rougher, it seems, on the inside. You see how he's using his elbows and he's wrapping up the hands of the arms of Bagwan, whereas when Bagwan gets in the clinch, his arms flail a little bit and he seems more like the victim. And that would only serve the, serve the purpose of Joyce because he is the guy that needs to be inside anyhow, so he may as well be more aggressive when he's there. Ten seconds left. Both boxers swinging for the fences now. The crowd getting a little loud. We hear the anticipation, the excitement. Heavyweights right around the corner. Now the referee's going to separate. He's going to give another point with just four seconds left. This time a warning back to Joyce. Puts two more points back in the po pocket of Bagwan. So after each boxer having received two warnings in the third round, it is really going to be an interesting one. It's hard to have called from this vantage point because one would almost need a calculator to deal with all those warnings. Not quite, but almost. At the end of the day, they sort of negate each other. Two for each, they certainly they negate each other. However, when you add them to the punches that were thrown before and after, one would need to keep track of what the, sc the running score was. 
ultimately we're going to get that score in just a moment. So referee getting ready to announce the victor. Who's going to go on to the quarterfinals tomorrow? Who's going to go on to London? And who's going to go home? These are big questions, folks. Big questions that deserve big answers. And we're going to get one of them right now. Actually, we're going to get all of those questions answered right now as the referee takes both boxers' hands in the center of the ring. The Irish boxer looking a little malcontent, and it goes to the Indian boxer, David Oliver Joyce, 32-30. So look at that. If jo David Oliver Joyce had not have gotten that warning in the end, this would have been a draw and then would have reverted to who had received the highest overall punch count scoring. But that didn't happen with just four seconds left. Joyce gave that away and gave the fight basically to Bhagwan. So it's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Can't control all the factors that take place in a fight, certainly not those.